Build systems in Sublime Text are a very powerful tool that allow you to execute any sort of tool or utility that you might like without having to leave Sublime Text. In the last video, we talked about how you could actually utilize one of these builds to execute a tool and choose which build system should actually be active at any given time. But what we didn't cover is how you could actually create one of these for yourself. So today, we're going to talk about that. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerdra, and welcome to this week's video where we're going to be continuing on from last week's video where we discussed how you could select a build system and actually execute a build by covering how you might actually create one of these things in the first place. This is a very powerful tool in Sublime Text. You could probably use this for a ton of things, whether you are a developer executing development tools, a web developer running utility tools, or just providing any sort of utility that you might like from directly within Sublime Text without having to leave and come back and break your workflow. And as we said, build systems in Sublime Text aren't complicated. There's just a lot of different configuration options at your disposal to make them behave exactly the way that you need them to behave. So in this week's video, we're going to be doing just a very simple build system that will execute an external program. In future videos, we're going to cover more in-depth detail on all of the configuration options you can add to a build system to change how it behaves. So I'm going to direct you down to the description of this video where you're going to find a couple of things. First, you're going to find a link to the build system playlist with all of the videos on the channel that deal with build systems. And secondly, you're going to find a link to the official documentation for build systems in Sublime Text as well for additional reference information. And while you're going down there, you know what to do. Now, build systems in Sublime Text are incredibly powerful. They can execute any external program that you want at any time you want for any action that you want. And that gives you some incredible flexibility in fitting it into your workflow to take exactly the actions that you need to take. The price that you pay for that flexibility, though, is that you need to know how the tools that you're using actually work in order to set the automated build up. The general rule of thumb is that if you can craft a command line or program invocation that can carry out the action that you want, you can make Sublime take that action for you automatically as part of a build system. This is a little bit of a contrast from using tools that are dedicated to a particular language, such as, for example, PyCharm, that is out of the box meant to do nothing but execute Python code, in which case the tool does a lot of the heavy lifting for you and setting those sorts of things up. That is not the case with Sublime Text, but I think you'll find that the flexibility that you get out of this far outweighs any inconvenience that you might have. So for example, if we actually wanted to set up a build system to do something Python related, we would first need to know how do we execute Python code ourselves. So we would jump into the command line. Uh, here I'm doing this under Windows, but this will of course work on any operating system. And we know that you first have to have Python installed. and that when you run it, you can specify the program that you would like to execute just on the command line. So by using this command line option, we can execute this file. And that means that it's possible for us to set up a build system to do this. And we need to create a file for this. We could do it manually, but the easiest thing to do is go to the Tools Build System menu. At the bottom, you'll find an item labeled New Build System. Choose that. You get a stub build system that gains you three advantages. First, there's a sample build system in here already to remind you what it is that you're creating. Secondly, the syntax for this file is set as appropriate, i.e. it is a JSON file. And third, it's set up so that when you save this file, it'll go into the appropriate location, which is your user package. And that's where you want this to go. That way you don't have to manually navigate to that location. And just makes your life a whole lot easier. Now, this file as a whole is a JSON file. Sublime's JSON parser is slightly relaxed. Trailing commas are okay and comments are okay. You may want to take advantage of that. You may also want to take advantage of the package dev package if you've never tried it before. One of the many features that it has to augment your experience in Sublime Text is enhanced syntax highlighting for build systems. Now, the build itself is controlled by the keys that you put inside of this JSON file. There's a bunch of them that we can put in here to control exactly how this works. Today, we're only going to be covering two of those. So remember, down in in the description of the video, there's a link to the playlist that'll have the other information on what else you can do with the build system. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now remember, when you save this file, it needs to go into your user package because we use that command. It's going to put that in there for us directly. Make sure when you save this that the extension is sublime-build because not all operating systems will include that. And if it doesn't have the extension, Sublime doesn't know that you intended it to be a build system. And the name that you give this file is the name that it will appear as inside of the menu. So make sure you choose something unique. So that you can tell which one it is. And because we're sampling Python here, I'm going to name this uh, as appropriate for a custom Python build. Now, the first key we're going to be talking about here is the shell command key. This is a key that you can use to specify how the build should be carried out as if you did something in the shell. And the shell is another name for a command prompt or a terminal. Basically, what this means is the argument that we're providing here is the actual text that you would type into a 
command prompt in order to carry out the action, which in our example is the Python command. So we can modify the stub that we have here to specify that we want to execute Python. Now, when we did this manually, we specified the name of the Python script we wanted to execute. We don't want to do that here because otherwise this build will always execute the exact same file. And in order to run a different Python file, we need to come and edit this one or make a whole new build and that's no fun. So what we can actually do here is take advantage of something that's available in build systems called variables. Now this is going to be the topic of a future video in the channel and there's a link to the documentation in the description that has a full list of these variables. But suffice it to say they will expand out when the build executes to provide more information about the environment that the build is currently running inside of and the dollar, star, the dollar file variable that we're using here expands out to the name of the file that's currently active and being edited at the time when you execute the build which would be the Python file that we're actually trying to execute. What we're actually going to also do here is put some double quotes around the name of this file and we can see that breaks the syntax highlighting so we're going to need to quote these to, in order to keep this as valid JSON data. Now why are we doing this? Because command processors across Windows, Mac OS and Linux use spaces in the command line text that you provide to them to know when one argument ends and the next one begins. So if there's any possibility that the name of your file or any folders on your hard drive contain spaces in their names that will mess up the command argument par parsing and it'll try to run the wrong thing. So we're just going to put quotes around this. That gives a hint to the command parser that all of the stuff within the double quotes is meant to be one thing. And now we save this build to make sure that it's active. Switch over to the Python file that we want to execute. And when we execute the build, we can see the following. There's a list of build systems in here and we want to choose the one that we just created, which again is the custom build. And choosing that executes the Python script exactly as we might expect. And the advantage to using shell command is you're literally mimicking exactly what would happen if you were to type something into a command prompt manually, which means that using this in your build, you can do things like input redirection, output redirection, executing multiple commands in sequence, conditionally executing one command and then another, but only if the first one succeeded, such as compiling a C program and then running it, but only if the compilation succeeded and so on. The downside to using this is that, as we just saw, if there's any opportunity for there to be spaces in the name of files and the like, then you need to put some quoting around them to make sure that the command line doesn't get confused. There's another way that we can use to specify how the program is going to be executed in in the build system, which doesn't require that quoting, but does have its own pitfalls, and that is the command key. Shell command mimics what happens when you type a command into a terminal or a command prompt in order to execute something. Command is essentially, logically speaking, the same as double clicking an icon in your application launcher or on your desktop or what have you, depending on your environment, to actually launch a program. That's not really what it's doing, but that's a good logical analogy for how things are happening here. And it requires you to specify the instructions for how to carry out the build in a slightly different way. So let's disable the shell command that we have here and instead create a command key instead. We spell that just like this. Now, when you're using shell command, what you're providing is a single string, the thing that you're typing into the console. Here, what we're specifying is a list of things. So we need to use uh, square brackets around this, the values that we're providing here in order to gather them all together. Now, there can be any number of things that you want in here. The very first one in the list is always the name of the program that's actually being executed. That's the icon that you're double clicking on, essentially. So here, that would be Python. Let me put a comma and now, we start specifying the command line arguments that we're going to be adding to this invocation in order to tell Python what it is that it's trying to do. And because these are all individual, one at a time, a list of arguments, when we specify dollar $file in here, we don't have to put extra quoting around it the way that we do for the shell command because it's already its own item. And that's as easy as that is. All we have to do now is save this and we can switch back to the Python file. And when we try to execute the build, we get the a result that we might expect out of this, the Python still continues to run. Now there's some other subtle differences between using command and shell command that we haven't really outlined here. We also haven't outlined how you would tell Sublime to select this build system when Python is the thing that you're actually trying to build. And we haven't also covered other topics such as how to get it to capture errors and warnings so we can navigate to them directly. Those are going to be topics for upcoming videos on the channel. So you're not going to want to miss those. Make sure you use the buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon. Those videos will be coming soon. And until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.